Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be showing how you can adjust the RPM of the rotor governor, also known as beeping. Let's get started. So one of the things that we think about with helicopters is we think that the giant rotor above our head is always moving at more or less the same speed. That's a good thing. As a matter of fact, and when you take a look down here at our tachometer, you'll notice it doesn't give us what RPM it's moving at, about 500, by the way, 525, I think. It tells us what percentage of max RPM that is moving. The other thing you'll probably observe is it has a safe range of about, uh, we'll call that 105, 106, and a load of about 85, 86, 87, something along those lines. Now, one of the things that you have to remember with helicopters is this giant rotor above us can adjust an angle. Oh, that's the purpose of the collective control here. But it also has a speed. Now, if you remember, since this is a wing up here, it is susceptible to a stall. Now, if this thing moves slow enough and the angle of attack gets high enough, it stalls. And of course, if this stalls, guess what the helicopter does? Wham! Slams into the ground. That's why it's so dangerous to take off basically vertically because you're just overloading everything when you do stuff like that. Dangerous. So one of the things we're going to take a look at is how we can adjust this RPM as well as why you want to adjust it and kind of uh, how to do it. So to get started with this, I'm going to go ahead and go over to my controls options real quickly here. I'm going to go ahead over to my throttle. It happens to be where it has. And I'm going to do a quick little search here. And we can do essentials. There's also all new. There's all sorts of buttons here. And I'm going to type in beep. One of the things you'll notice here is we have an engine's beep trim increase and an engine's trim decrease. You can also see it's by engine too. For me, I do them all at one time. I'm not going to worry too much about this. What this is going to do is give us the ability to change the set point of our rotor. Now, in the real world, this gets kind of interesting because as we're sitting here on the ground, idle RPM might not be at this number. As a matter of fact, we might get into the helicopter, get everything all nice and booted up. Everything is looking pretty good. We come down here and we notice that the idle RPM is uh, sitting here. Oh, it's at 99% today. It's supposed to be at 100% is what the book says. So what we can do with the beep control is we can actually change this RPM. If I hold the beep control towards decrease, what you'll see here is the RPM of the rotor will actually come down. Now, of course, when you do this, you're going to get that to remind you that the RPM is far too low to be safe. As a matter of fact, as soon as we did that in the real world, we go up about an inch and then the rotor RPM would drop off even faster as the torque would race up because it's basically going to stall the rotor. Now, if we hold it into the increase position, you'll notice we get a little spike of torque here as it catches up to the new RPM. And what you'll observe is my RPM gets higher and it gets louder. You can see we can go all the way as high as about 104% of our RPM. That's a lot. You can also see here a little N2 here, which is our gas generator. We can see it's basically chilling at 103 here, which is a lot. This engine is moving fast. Now, remember, the engine on this thing is a Rolls-Royce 250. That is a gas turbine. It's about three quarters of a million dollar US new. So if uh, we want to run our RPMs this high, this is going to cause some really, really bad problems for us. Uh, the other problem we're going to have too running it this high is uh, now we know that if we wanted to do something like a quick stop, we're probably going to over rev the engine and do some real damage to this helicopter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, beep the trim all the way down, beep engine down to 100%, which is what it says to do in the manual, and leave it right there. To give you an idea of the effect of this, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get myself into the world's uh, sloppiest hover here. Whoa, that looks pretty good to me. <laughs> Whoa, I forgot I left the wind on. I do that every time. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to leave this thing at the 100% RPM. Now, an R66 is a great helicopter. Again, you don't have to work too, too hard to make it do different things here, which is awesome. So I'm just going to go ahead and spin us this way, and uh, we're going to kind of line up with the runway so you can see it. Now, I'm going to pull a hover out of ground effect because it's going to make the effect much more obvious here. There we go, right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to increase, I'm gonna beep increase here, press and hold. And again, I'm not touching my collective. You can see my RPM slowly rising. And what do you notice? The helicopter goes up because now we're rotating faster, we're actually producing more lift per revolution. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gently reduce, whoa, Oh boy, this thing gets a little touchy when you do that. So one of the things I notice as a pilot here is everything just got a lot touchier because we're producing that much more lift per little angle change. Remember, most of your lift comes from speed, not from angle of attack. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and tip myself forward here. Give it just a kick. Remember, we're way past our limits here. And I'm just going to get ripping here. There we go. And let's go ahead and slow down. Oh boy, we just over-revved the engine. 
<laughs> one of the things you'll observe there is when it came out of it, we had so much extra lift that when we came out, we were actually able to basically stabilize it. And now it's actually pretty cool. That's a lot of load on the rotor, by the way. It'd probably do some really bad bending of metal there. So let's go ahead and settle again. And I'm going to go ahead and reduce. I'm going to beep decrease here until we get back to the standard of 100%. Now, this is how the helicopter was designed. Uh, one of the things you'll probably observe here is we're sinking. And uh, the reason we're sinking is we're actually producing less lift. So let's go ahead and pull the collective up a little bit so we don't go smacking into the runway there at full speed. That'd be pretty embarrassing. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stabilize this a little bit here and again try to keep it somewhat balanced. We do have a crosswind now to make it fun for us. And I'm going to decrease. I'm going to beep decrease here. And now watch what happens. Uh-oh, we're sinking. We're sinking. Whoa. Now, the first thing you'll observe is we have the big, angry, low RPM horn. And uh, the reason it's screaming at us is because the RPM is low. The other thing you'll notice is our torque is relatively high for what we're asking this helicopter to do. And the reason it's like that is because of the fact that we basically governed it down. Now, that rotor above us is really, really, really struggling to give us enough lift right now because we're putting so much load on it. Now, if I were to actually just let this thing settle, let me come down here under the ground. Yeah, we don't need to be pretty here. We just need to settle. There we go. We would have had a really, really high risk of stalling the rotor. So let's go ahead and kick it back up to 100% here. That looks good to me. A couple of steps back, and we'll go ahead and just do our good old-fashioned takeoff. And you can see we get no drama there, just like that. So you're probably sitting here going, well, that's a pretty cool feature that I didn't know that they had in Flight Sim. I think it's actually handy. They actually took the time to actually put that one in there. Is this something you're ever really going to need to use a lot in Flight Sim? And the answer there really is it depends. In the real helicopters, um, often you have to trim for both takeoff as well as for cruise. Uh, one of the things you'll get is if you're doing 170 or something, again, it's a fast helicopter, and you look down, you'll notice your RPM is a little low or a little high, and that gives you that ability to trim it just a little bit to keep it in the safe range. Some helicopters will actually trim themselves, which is really, really nice. And then some helicopters, uh, such as the Cohen Sim uh, Robinson 22, don't even have the ability to trim. In a flight sim, though, because everything is so smooth, everything works so well, you're probably going to find that you don't really need to fiddle with it very much unless you're looking to tweak your hover game a little bit. I find that when you reduce the RPM even a little bit, it is a little bit easier to learn to hover because you're going to have a less, it's going to be less sensitive, again, depending on your joystick. In the real world, we don't do that ever because if we do that, we're going to stall the rotor and a stalled rotor makes our helicopter do one of those, which is uh, very unpleasant for everybody on board, as well as the safety and health of the helicopter itself. Uh, we don't want to do that. Increasing that RPM, of course, is going to give us a little bit more thrust, which makes everything a little bit more sensitive to make it a little bit easier to do other activities. Activities too. If you're trying to do something where I need just a little bit more thrust for takeoff, you definitely have that ability to do so. Keeping in mind, you will be operating outside of the limits of that particular helicopter. Enjoy.